The new clock code update comes with one very important feature that you must know about. Language server protocol support directly baked into clock code, which allows clock code to communicate with the language that you're writing your code in, just like how professional developers have always used code editors to create functional and working code. And now you can do the same in clock code directly. So let's see how it works. In this code base, I'm going to just ask, find the code that's used to invocate an LLM because this is an AI powered application. And now it's not gonna use language server yet. It's gonna use its regular search tools in order to find the code that I use to call the language models. In this case, it's trying to find some text that relates to chat and completions because that's very common with this AI code. It's trying to find open AI references. And now it already found in my backend transcription file, the LLM call here on line 66. Now it's not using the language server yet, but you will find that one way that it can really use it effectively is for a question like this one. Find all the references in the code base where this function is used. And these kinds of questions are super effective when you actually want to figure out how code is used in a repository and go ahead and fix any bugs that might have been introduced by AI code. So now we can go ahead and ask this question, but I will add with LSP. But now we see an issue. It's trying to use the language server on this symbol, but it says that no LSP server is available for Python and it will use grep instead. And the problem with grep is that it's a little bit less effective in finding the right file references compared to something like a language server that's really built to find code references quickly in the language that you're actually programming with. Now, the absolute simplest way to configure the LSP server is to type slash plugin and then go ahead and just check out all the plugins until you find the one for your language. So in my case, I wanna find the Python one and you will see that I find the PyWrite LSP right here. I can just simply install it for me and for me only. Now, the great part about this is that most of the standard languages you'll be working for are supported, but I'll leave a link in the description so you can find the right documentation if you need to add your own LSP server if you're using some kind of fancy language. But in my case, if I type plugin again, you will see that PyWrite LSP is currently installed, which is Microsoft's static analyzer for Python. So I've just restarted Cloud Code to test it out and I actually moved to a specific version because in the current main latest version, this feature is broken. It's probably fixed by the time you're watching this, but if not, definitely use this command instead. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to just check out this file. And then I'm going to say, find the function for LLM invocation in here and use LSP to find references across files. Now, the reason why this is so powerful is because cloud code is not going to just naively read 100 files or use some standard command line tools. No, it's going to use a proper language server to find all the references to this function, which is much more efficient, especially if you're working with really large code bases. So in this case, you can see it's using find references and immediately it found three references across two files. So I can do control O here to just expand that a little bit. And you can see that it finds in backend at the PY on line 108, which I can just scroll to right here, 108. Indeed, it's using clean with LLM, which is my LLM invocation function. And similarly, in this transcription Python file, we of course have the definition on line 56, but it is also used inside of this file, specifically on line 90, you can see it's calling it on its own inside of the same class. So brilliant, it's able to find all those references very quickly. And this allows Cloud Code to operate much more like a human developer would, because if I want to know where, for example, this function is defined, I would do control and click on it, and indeed, that puts me at the definition of the file very quickly. I also don't just search naively through a bunch of files. I use these kinds of shortcuts. And Cloud Code can now use these shortcuts as well. If you are still doubting just how powerful this new feature is, I can let you know right now that I've kind of been using it for a couple of months already. I've been using the Serena MCP server, which exposes these language servers to all kinds of AI code editors, including Cloud Code. And this MCP server is super popular. It's got over 17,000 stars on GitHub, and I've been using it for bigger projects, not just pet projects or demos that you see all over YouTube. So the great part about this is that I know that these language servers work very well, and now you don't even need to set up this kind of complex MCP server. It's all easy to set up in cloud code using a simple plugin. Another great example of a question to ask is this one. What parameters does chat completions create except? If you're using a language like Python, which isn't strictly typed, Cloud Code can make a lot of errors when it's trying to come up with code. But the great part is that as it finds code that you're using across the repository, it can query the language server to better understand what kinds of parameters are required for functions. And now you can see that it comes back with this extensive list of all the required parameters, the optional ones, and not just the names of the parameters, but even the description. So 
How did it do that? Well, I can actually do this myself. I can go ahead and find where chat completions create is called. It's being called here in the code base and I can hover over the word create and you can see here that it actually exposes a bunch of information about the function. Essentially, Claude Code is now doing this just like how I would do it as a professional developer. So it can read way more information about the function definition and pass it back to me or use that to generate much safer and reliable code. I want you to go to the comments and make sure to share if you're using a different language that I'm not covering in this video, because this way we can help each other out with the right configurations to make sure that we all get the most out of Claude code. So I'll see you in the comments.